Today is World Water Day. The right to water came up several times in our Human Rights Day conversations yesterday. The Minister of Water and Sanitation, Senzo Nkunu, will any moment now uh, use this occasion to update South Africans on the status of water in the country. Um, he's actually started already and will be taking you there soon. Um, actually, let's take you there live. Produce a broad agenda and a blueprint for international action on environmental and development and development issues that would help guide international cooperation and development uh, policy in the 20th century. It is at this summit that the 22nd of March of each year from 1993 got declared as the World Water Day. The aim was to bring the water agenda to the fore and remind governments across the globe of their responsibility to ensure that everyone has access to clean water. Yesterday in South Africa, we commemorated Human Rights Day, a day when the country reflects on its strides it has made and its shortcomings as far as delivery of services are concerned. Water is one of those services. But it, water has a distinction from other services in that water is a, a fundamental human right. It is life. It is a basic necessity and it's a must that everyone must have. And on our side as government, from local to national, we are committed and have a responsibility and duty to make sure that indeed everyone has access to water. Now, this gathering coincides with the, with the Ninth World Water Forum that is currently taking place in Dakar, Senegal. And that gathering in Senegal is uh, working on a theme, Water Security for Peace and Development. And as a country, we are well represented there. Uh, we have a full delegation that is in attendance and we will be looking forward to receiving a comprehensive report in terms of the proceedings and outcomes from that conference. Now this year the World Water Day is celebrated, celebrated under the theme Making the Invisible Visible. That is what they are dealing with in Dakar. This year's topic refers to a very important subject of water resource management, which is groundwater. Groundwater is by and large invisible, but its impact is visible everywhere. And that is the intention. Groundwater is by and large out of sight, it is under our feet, and it's a hidden treasure, but it enriches our lives once it has uh, been drawn and uh, put to use. As climate change gets worse, groundwater will become more and more critical. As a department and as a country, we are committed to exploiting, uh, exploring groundwater as an alternative water source to ensure water security to communities in communities affected by water supply challenges in our country. It is for this reason that we are fully fledged strategy on uh, groundwater and uh, on, on Monday next week on the 28th we will be dealing with the, the, um, the side of the strategy around um, operationalizing it. In other words, 
we will be looking at what are the programs that we need to have to operationalize our strategy so that uh, we um, approach this matter in a highly organized and scientific way. And as such, the strategy deals with uh, a lot of things, including uh, um, the policy, um, policy framework, together with the legislative framework that should apply, uh, and then human resource and uh, even uh, the issue of institutionalizing our approach to groundwater. South Africa is a water scarce country, and we want to say this more and more, louder and louder so that every one of us in the country understands and come to terms with this fact that we are a water scarce country. Ranking at the 30th, as the 30th driest country in the world and we receive summer rainfall in November, between November and March, with exception of the Western Cape as parts of Eastern and Northern Cape which receive their water between between uh, May and August. That receive winter rain, uh, re they receive water, uh, re uh, winter rainfall in those areas. Now since the surface water resource are fully allocated, our water supply needs to be supplemented by international transfers. And in this case, from Lesotho Highland Water Transfer Scheme so that we augment our, our water as a water scarce country so that we increase security of water in, in South Africa. And in this regard, we uh, still have to explore uh, other possibilities going forward so that we, we have a uh, a reasonable, um, I would say, um, uh, horizon in terms of water security all the time. Ideally, where from where I sit, I would like a horizon of between 15 and 20 years so that we plan all the time when we envisage or foresee danger uh, and we must identify it uh, and deal with it always within the horizon of 20 years, 15 and 20 years, so that we are able to plan uh, ahead. Now, we, we, we are approaching uh, the second phase of uh, that scheme, Lesotho Highland Water Transfer Scheme, and we are here about the developments up to now. In order to meet the increase in water demand, we've gradually increased groundwater use through groundwater development scheme. There is an increase, increasing trend for individual e com community members to drill poles for self-supply in response to water supply challenges. The rapid rate at which this is happening shows how resilient and critical the groundwater resource is. Groundwater plays an important role in ensuring that there is water security in South Africa, including contributing approximately up to 13% of the national water supply, in addition to providing, providing up to 100 water supply to some areas. And therefore you can see from this that there is a huge benefit by different communities in different parts of the world uh, of the country uh, uh, from uh, groundwater and therefore we need to be much more highly uh, organized in this particular uh, aspect of uh, our water resource. It is thus a resource of strategic importance. Climate change and increased demand for water across multiple sectors have already impacted surface water storage through South of Southern Africa. Studies predict that by 2025, this region, Southern Africa, will have insufficient water supplies to meet human and ecosystems needs 
resulting in increased competition for scarce resource, constrained economic development, and declining uh, human health. And these are quite uh, alarming uh, words to mention, and therefore need to be um, prevented at all costs. And that's why I'm talking here about phase two of uh, the Lesotho trans uh, Highlands Water uh, Transfer Scheme and phase two thereof. And again, the need to explore more possibilities in terms of uh, water security in the country, of which groundwater is part, but also any other possibility from outside our country. The Water Research Commission provides groundwater research and knowledge to the country by translating needs into research ideas, transferring research results, and, and disseminating knowledge. Over the years, the Water Research Commission has continued to strive to become a global knowledge and, and South Africa's premier knowledge hub across the innovation value chain. In addition, the Water Research Commission has developed knowledge in this field together with the Council for Geological Science, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, uh, VETS uh, and VETS University, Stellenbosch University, but of course with also DWS laboratories and other role players in this regard. We have uh, a, a, a formidable institutional arrangements in the country and uh, we rely uh, on them and we thank them for their continued work and contribution in this regard. A major challenge that needs to be addressed is the translation of science into policy and thus to make the technical output of the project have an impact at both national and regional level. Developing resilient agricultural livelihoods and sustainable management of water resources are vital to achieve most of the development goals as outlined in the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and the South and, and the Africa Agenda 2063. Today, however, groundwater is acknowledged as a national asset and an integ integral part of South Africa's water resources. Groundwater has played a major role in reducing the backlog for domestic water supply. As the department, we have acknowledged that our country's water resources are on the decline in both quality and quantity. We are not the only country facing the water quality challenges. The World Economic Forum Global Risk Report of 2019 reports that water environmental concerns are more prevalent than ever. The water quality management policies and strategies in South, in South Africa 2017 identifies pollution from, wa from waste water treatment plants and mine operations as main sources of pollution in South Africa. Policies and standards to deal with pollution in these sectors are generally in place and challenges facing the country are not due to policy gap, but rather non-compliance to existing policies and standards. It is for this reason that even now we want to take this opportunity and issue a warning to polluters that stop polluting, but that is not enough. We are up for it. We are up to them. And we know what to do. And they know what we are supposed to do and what they are supposed to do. It is for this reason that we want to indicate we will be upping our game on compliance issues including penalties on polluters. So it's two things that we are saying to them. Stop polluting where you 
fail to comply, you will be dealt with via penalties. The department is fast-tracking the activities of the anti-pollution task team to deal with all water quality pollution problems in the country, be it the main rivers, including the Val River system, but all other rivers in the country. This is where we are going. The objectives of the task team are to coordinate and integrate efforts for management of water resource quality in South Africa. It will provide high-level guidance to ensure protection of water resource and identify re re remedies to mitigate pollution impacts. Compliance, monitoring and enforcement is one of the key tasks, key tasks of the anti-pollution task team in our country. The main source of pollution comes from domestic wastewater treatment, which includes the leaking or malfunctioning of wastewater collection systems designed to transport wastewater to our wastewater treatment works, as well as the works themselves and from mining operations. Currently, there are 1,013 municipal wastewater treatment works in the country and of these 544 that is 54 percent have authorizations in place with 23 which is about 200 and which is about 236 that are unauthorized or operate under expired authorizations this department is progressing with verification of the authorization status of a further 141 works, which is the remaining 14%. Again, on Monday, on the 28th of this month, we will be sitting for the whole day, and one of the main focus areas will be uh, getting details on this matter, progress that is being made by the task team, looking at all points of, uh, pollu of uh, pollution in the country and actually also looking at our practical programs that uh, seek to address these matters. We will be taking progress in detail on this matter. Since 2014, the department has investigated a total of 598 cases related to wastewater treatment works, which were mainly as a result of complaints received from the public. Enforcement actions were taken by DWS against these municipalities, which were found to have violated the water legislation in relation to water, wastewater treatment works. Enforcement actions taken, uh, taken uh, including administrative, civil, and criminal cases. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy once more to say uh, we will be taking details on all these matters in terms of uh, our actions.